several years ago, I had a class after lunch, and I taught high school at that time, a class after lunch that would come in pinging off the walls. Have you ever had that kind of a class? I really think that they put every student with ADHD in my classroom <laughs> at that time. And so I was having a heck of a time getting them settled down and ready to learn. Sometimes I felt like I lost 10 minutes of class, and we just can't afford to lose 10 minutes of class time. I expressed that to my paraprofessional, who I was working with at the time. I had a paraprofessional in the classroom, and I said, I don't know what we're going to do, because nothing I'm doing is working. And I had pretty good strategies at that time for maintaining discipline. One day, she shows up in my classroom with a this coloring book, this exact one, and a bag of markers. And she said, Susan, how about when kids come into the room, we have some copies of mandalas and some markers for them to choose, and until the bell rings, let them color. I said, really? You want me to have the students coloring? She said, yes, this is ancient wisdom. And when you color a mandala from the outside to the center, it focuses attention. I'd not heard of that. Now there's much written about it, actually. And there's even books for adults on maintaining balance and reducing stress using mandalas. But this was new to me then. I looked at Emily, and I said, Emily, we teach at a high school. What are people going to say if they walk by my classroom and they see students coloring? Do you know what she said to me? She said, just shut the door. <laughs> shut the door. OK, that's what I did. I was ready to try something new. And if it worked, great. So the next day, when the kids came in, we gave them the, the markers, we told them to pick a mandala, and they walked in the room, we said, here's what you do with it, and we even told them why. This is to help you focus and get ready for learning. I'm not kidding you. I was amazed. By the time the bell rang for class, you could hear a pin drop in the room. It was so quiet, and all these students were coloring. It was fabulous. Now, some of you are probably thinking, how did you get them to stop? Well, I had a hard time with it. For some kids, they didn't want to stop coloring. So what I would do, I would say, no, 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 you have to stop, it's time to do this, and now I had a different problem because I was trying to get kids. So finally, about three weeks in, I realized that the students who were asking to continue the coloring of the mandala were often the ones who caused the most behavior issues in the classroom. They were the ones who were always out of their seat. They were the ones always chatting. They were the ones having trouble focusing. So I, I, I said, OK, we'll try an experiment here. I'm willing to be open to, to trying something new. I said, here's the deal. I will allow you to continue to color while I'm speaking, while I'm talking, while we're doing things in class that aren't interrupted by the mandala. But if I need you to write or participate with a, a partner, the mandala has to go away. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that, Mrs. Fitzell. OK, we can do that. I said, and there's one other thing. With any of these focus tools, including the mandala, if I ask you a question, I have to know that you're going to be able to answer and, and have been listening, at least have an indication that you've been listening. If you look at me and you go, uh, what, huh, I wasn't paying attention, coloring my mandala or using my focus ring, then that's not a win-win situation because my job is to teach and your job is to learn. And if it's hindering your ability to do the job, then we can't use that tool. So that's how I maintained the, the managed it. I maintained the discipline because we don't, we, I don't want to make it punitive, and I don't want to take it away from everybody, but I want to make sure that it's actually doing what it's intended to do and not becoming more of a distraction. So that was the mandala. An interesting thing happened. My daughter, who was a junior in high school around that time, was filling out college application essays. And she was having a horrible time one week coming up with one of the essays, crumpling up papers and... And, and having difficulty getting it written. And I remember asking her, what is wrong? She says, Mom, they don't teach you how to write about yourself in honors English. 
And they surely don't want you to write in first person. And here they're asking me to write in first person three things that would make me an asset to their school. So I shared with her this mandala and a couple other strategies. And I said, you're stressed? Try coloring this. It works for my students. She did. It worked. Within 45 minutes, she had her paper started, her first draft done. It was amazing. Fast forward. First year in college, I start walking through her dorm, I, I, going to her dorm room. And I notice as I got off the elevator, there are mar mandalas on all these hall room doors. I got into her room, and there's more mandalas, all colored and stuck to the walls. And I said, honey, what's with all the mandalas? She says, mom, so many of my, my classmates stress out over the test and stress out over their studying. So they come to me and they start to complain that school is too hard. I hand them a mandala, I hand them some markers, and I tell them, go color. <laughs> and she said, mom, it works. So she was using it at the college level, right? So this is awesome. In your book, if you take a look at pages 135 and 136, you have a mandala. If you happen to bring colored highlighters or markers with you this morning, feel free to color your mandala while I'm speaking. I will not be offended. If you're a fidgeter, feel free to fidget. Just as long as you're not distracting your partners. Because I want to respect your way of learning just as much as we want to respect our students' way of learning.